Thank you. Thank you, Mathangani, for such a deep, uh, in, uh, you know, introduction, background. We are very confident, of course, we have the right uh, content expert to take, you, take us through this. Um, and we reckon, of course, the experience is coming on the table to support all of us in this area. So, Kariboni Sana, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Damaris Ndungwa. I am uh, also an HR professional with a great bias, of course, in learning and development, the domain I love very much. I am the lead strategist, learning and development again in Blue Concepts Africa. And I take this opportunity to welcome each and every body who is in this uh, webinar, this call. Good morning, Mumbi, all the way in Nairobi from Mombasa, Vincent. We appreciate you showing up. Uh, thank you very much, everybody who has joined. That is Mathangani Muya, our uh, content expert on this topic today. And maybe Mathangani, just to kick us off, we understand uh, of course, the question of career and employment, loss of jobs is not a new concept, is not a new thing in, uh, in the recent years. But we know it has been fueled a lot, especially by the disruption, uh, more by the pandemic. There is a lot that has gone into organizations, into you know, realignment, retrenchment, a lot of things that have led uh, to the bigger challenge of unemployment. Put us into context about this. Uh, well, Damaris, uh, there is no doubt, and I believe uh, uh, the people who are here, either directly or indirectly, have been affected by various disruptions. Mm. We will start, first of all, with the disruption by technology and uh, digital innovations. It has changed how we used to do work. It has changed how companies operate. It has changed the behavior of the workforce, it has changed the culture of the organizations because we are moving away from what we would call a, a kind of a, a centrally controlled environment to where people are working on their own and the deliverables are actually pegged either to teams. We have also seen the way we used to do work in terms of uh, applying either a lot of documentation, the issue of deliveries, the issue of making orders, the issue of um, keeping records, all this has gone digital. So today you can do a lot of things by sitting using your phone or using even your, your laptop. And, and, and this has also changed how we have been doing work and what we need to do either as individuals and organizations. There is also the demand of new skills. New skills have come up. So if you're not tech survey, you might just find yourself uh, being becoming irrelevant. If you are not so, if you are text, if you have been taught about digital and tech, but you are not as fast on your keyboard that we are saying, an order comes in, there's no time to say, come tomorrow, we'll go to Kidogo, I'll get back to you. It's you respond there and then. What happens is that the orders are canceled on the way. So there is a lot of uh, opportunities that come in that come in, in between so that you are able to match what you're looking for. We are also having situations where we have to reskill, we have to get new skills. Skilling, then you'll find yourself. Two, people have been, there are a lot of courses that have come up. Are we, when we take a certain course, aware of what, where we are going to work? So again, be wary. All these disruptions, then COVID of course came and it changed the whole scenario. And without overemphasizing it, we now know that it brought a whole concept of work. And mm -hmm. most of us, including myself, we really had to get to know how to use all what we are using now, including this Zoom. Because we are just used to picking a phone, headset, or uh, your mobile, and you can be able to call person. And now we're told we have to work from home, you have to use this technology. So there's a lot of that. And of course, jobs have been lost. And so what are we doing? We have to reset ourselves again. We have to find out where are these jobs? What skills do I need to get these jobs? So we don't have to stick to our old traditional one. Because if you are certain profession, then you discover it has gone digital. Your choices are very limited of getting a job if you don't go digital. 
So these are the disruptions we are having. Very well articulated, uh, Mr. Matangani. There is actually a lot that has gone in between uh, last year, March, and today. We can barely actually put an account of the things we've been navigating on and the change we've been able to, to even put ourselves uh, on, whether consciously or unconsciously, you know, including being able to do a lot of things through even tech applications that we had to learn to do that. And this is part of the shifts that we've made. Uh, some are, of course, uh, enabling us in our life. Others are, you know, putting us down, especially where we had to to lose uh, some source of income or livelihood or our careers, or somehow we got a bit uh, disoriented from where the direction we were heading. So this uh, brings in the two contexts, actually about our career loss, and uh, also for the people who feel like they are drifting, they are not quite aligned to the passion or career they would have loved to, to land on. Can you just uh, maybe go a, a bit deeper on demystifying this career loss and drifting from your career as well? Thank you. Yes. Um, I'll give you a story. Take the case of uh, somebody called John. Mm -hmm. John did a Bachelor of Commerce at the university. His dream was to become an accountant. But as soon as he left college, he registered for his accounting professional exams. He passed. The job he got first was in a large organization manufacturing, and it was a, a stores job, as a stores assistant. So from there, he took the job. He moved on to procurement. His dream was in finance. But he continued finding himself doing more of procurement supplies type of work. And as luck would have it being a good worker, he was even promoted. Mm -hmm. And when he was promoted to be a supervisor, uh, of course, it comes with the parts. But in that environment, there were so many departments. So there was a place for receiving good and recording them. There was another one for goods out, and he was very good at that. There was another person dealing with sales administration. He was put in the sales administration uh, store. And then at another time, he is doing procurement. Then at another time, he was put into dispatches. Then another time, he was told, put now actually into procurement. Within a span of about 10 years, people started coming in and they were coming in with either professional certificates or qualifications or academic qualifications in procurement, logistics, supplies management. And he realized that actually the employer is now one advertising that we want a manager. We want a departmental manager must have this. So what has been, when John tried to find out, was told, you know, we are looking for professionals. And he was wondering, I thought I am a professional. I have done this job. And he knows it. So what has been happening to John is that with time, he has been drifting away from what he wanted to do. And then whenever he tried to apply for a job in account, actually, he actually went ahead and he completed his, uh, his CPAK. He's a CPAK, but he has never looked at a general ledger. So after all these years, when he applies for a job, he will write a become I've got CPAK, but uh, then his CV will just read stores, procurement, which is good, but they're saying we are not seeing the accounting, we are the financing you, we want a financial accountant, we want a management accountant. So that's a typical case of somebody who has been drifting away from their job. Mm -hmm. And many others you can relate to that you started a job which maybe you thought was a stopgap and two things happen. Either you submerge yourself into it, get its proper qualifications so that when the call comes, you can stand out to be counted. But most people what happens is that we forget. 
So how do you, that is a typical case of somebody drifting away from, from their career. The career. Yeah. The yeah. Other factor, yeah. There are other factors that can come in, which would include a, you're working in an environment which is not giving you the opportunity to practice, to do, to learn and acquire skills of the job you love. You could be actually in that job. Mm -hmm. And with time, you realize you have learned so little because when you go to interviews, yes. people ask you certain yes. questions and you ask, hmm, does that happen? I'm not, you have never even actually, you're not in it. So you discover actually what you've been doing. Either you've been doing a low level, mm -hmm. a routine type of job, you yeah. are never challenged, you want to be a leader, you want to be a supervisor, or you are even a supervisor, but actually you yourself are being supervised, the people you are, being, you are supposed to supervise are being supervised by somebody else, and actually you actually cease to be a supervisor. So when they ask for a supervisory or managerial job, you discover that you have been left down because actually you have not been managing people you have not been given the opportunity. So mm -hmm. that's another question of how you can discover you're losing your job. I'm 10 years into this job, but mm -hmm. really I have problems. You can also know that you're losing your career when you're given certain responsibilities and you're having difficulties actually discharging them. Ask yourself, what is it I need to do? So it could be excuse mm -hmm. you don't have because sure. you're never given the opportunity. So those are just simple examples of how you you can start losing your career. Good, good. I think that's very comprehensive, uh, Mr. Mathangani. I'm even tempted to ask, uh, here I am. Uh, I've realized I'm drifting from my career, or even probably I've been hit uh, negatively and lost my career. How, how do I, you know, recover my career? <laughs> Are there some uh, <laughs> core steps that I, I can, uh, you know, follow? They are they are proved, you know, if I follow, I might succeed. Uh, how do I recover my career, whether I'm drifting or maybe I've lost? Yes, well, the first thing is to, and uh, uh, this is something we should all learn, is take a stock of yourself. Mm -hmm. it, when you sit down and you feel like you're not really enjoying or moving at the pace which you should have been moving, Mm -hmm. When you look a bit at a, your peers, and I'm not saying you compare with those fast track fast people, you're yes. just saying a typical job mm -hmm. tra tra um, a movement or development. So yeah. you check and say, what did I want to be or do? Mm -hmm. Is there something in my mind that keeps on telling you, oh, you wanted to be a teacher? How did you end up being a policeman? Okay, you wanted to be a policeman. How did you end up being a technician? You don't even enjoy technical work. So they are taught your science. And the minute you sit and you just feel occasionally that you're being propped by somebody to tell you, that can be a trigger, which now you can go and take a piece of paper and say, look, I've been here 10 years. I have not moved. I've been here five years. I think I'm not moving. By the way, five years is a very short time, good people. So, but don't get to five years before you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. So you start to give us talk and say, what need I do? Let's go back to the case of John. If John wanted actually to become a procurement professional, and he felt he was enjoying the job, he could have taken steps to get the qualifications for that career. And that would have anchored him into the job. Mm -hmm. So if you find yourself in that situation and you're having difficulty going back to where you came from, like, I mean, with all due respect, it's very difficult to work in one area and decide you're going to become an accountant after you have worked for 10 years or 15 years in a different profession. You have, you'd have to be special, and I'm not saying you're special, but you just have to gauge yourself. Mm -hmm. So what happens? You have to now know what are the skills, what is the, 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 the qualifications I need for the start, working on them. That is one, so that you get back into a career. Yes. The other yeah. one is to is to deliberately make an intentionally make an effort to try to get into the line that you enjoy. Because the more you do one job, you and you're not enjoying it, 
uh, you don't have a passion for it, you don't yeah. really feel comfortable, you're still feeling this is not where it should be, what you do is that you, you start giving 50% of what you should be giving. Mm -hmm. And what happens, mm -hmm. your uh, average performance is noticed, meaning you'll be skipped by your supervisors when positions come. That is why John remained one place was just a supervisor instead of being a manager. So those are the steps one can immediately start doing. The other one is start planning early. When the minute you enter into this and say, I think I'm starting to like this job. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. do it well and start getting to know the key skills that you need for it. Mm -hmm. It is your supervisor, develop your managerial skills, your supervisor, your leadership, your emotional intelligence, your interpersonal skills, so that you become more recognized as a leader in that field. So you can start from that. The other one is, of course, to get uh, somebody who can work with you through that journey, either a mentor within or outside the organization. Great, great. Now, um, those are very, uh, they, they sound rather simple <laughs> kind of steps <laughs> to follow, to follow. But, uh, you know, we always have the challenge of actually standing up and the confidence to do something. When um, we lose our jobs, sometimes even the confidence to share uh, with, with, with uh, the people around us, it, the impact of actually imagining uh, the, the, the consequences of the loss. How do we navigate that? emotionally as well as accepting the whole situation Matangani. okay do i hear you you were asking about how to handle a job loss yes how do we handle it? exactly all right okay yeah these are very difficult times let's admit mm -hmm. uh we have seen a lot of disruptions in our work due to COVID. Yes. But of course it was also happening before but this time it has hit us hard Mm -hmm. So how do we go about it? So first, the first thing, it's not easy, let's admit it, losing a job. So you, but I would say the, don't do anything that first day. Just go where you come from, where you stay. Mm -hmm. Most of us have a tendency of going to the, that place near your place, okay, to drown the sorrows or to wind up. So the first thing you can do is go home, Share with the person closest to you, whoever it is. Yes. Your spouse, your brother, your very close friends. You may not have to do it the same day, but just go home, relax. The following day, you may just call somebody and say, look, I have to share this with you. I've just lost my job. Simple. Now, you have to be careful whom you are sharing that with, because you don't go announcing to everybody. People have got different reactions. With all due respect, some people are cynical. So share the first thing with the person who is closest to you. Secondly, start immediately thinking what are your options. If you are one of those who are uh, like uh, into a little bit of business, where are your options? Should I now concentrate on this business of mine or should I start looking for a job? Once you decide which direction you are, immerse yourself into it. The other thing you must do immediately is start looking at where are your strengths? Where are your skills? What is it that you knew best? And then you start kind of chatting. But if I'm looking for a job, where are these jobs I can get into? Most people tend to focus on the where you knew yourself, where you 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 the, the, the industry which was big, you are known working in this big company, and then you want to also start applying the big companies. Unfortunately, the big companies have got a way of growing their own, or they are also the biggest uh, lay who are the, the ones who lay the highest number of people. So start looking at other sectors, the industry that we, we can use and start actually making a conscious effort that I'm targeting this industry because this is where I belong, you are technical. If you are a big engineer, don't go looking for these big engineering companies. Look for consultants, contractors, where are these jobs? Then 
That way you are able to start aligning yourself. The other thing is, of course, if preparing yourself and managing the transition is a whole ball game. Yes, yes. Is, we, you got itself, there's a whole training, there are specialists who train you about how to manage your finances, there are yes. those who do counseling for you. But those are the most immediate steps that you, you must take as yourself. Start yes. making the decisions, which direction do I want to move? And from there, we can move on. Thank you, thank you, actually, for putting, up, for putting that in. It's a, it's a challenge, psychologically, emotionally, and we know that the best thing um, as far, you know, expert and voice is we need to move and move fast. But sometimes you get caught up in that emotional turmoil. Uh, and thanks for putting in the steps that we can actually rise from that. I want to move in swiftly to, yes, we, we, we've heard and understood the context of losing a job and how we can recover it. But we want to go to a bit of the, you know, the nitty gritties. How do I move now? And you've mentioned about the skills. Uh, audit your skills. And after the auditing, the skills, of course, the famous CV comes in. I want to secure myself an interview kindly from the expert. Madangani, tell us more. Very good. Yes. Now, that's why, again, the next step is once you decide which direction, so I will con I'll concentrate much more on this who want to get back to the job. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have been working for five years or 10 years, and uh, you are all right, you are comfortable. You actually forgot even how to write a CV because the right CV you wrote is the job you either had. Or, or, and that happens, it's natural because if you don't have to apply for a job, you don't have to write. So you, the first thing that you have to do once you decide to get to the job is to do an audit of your skills. Now, uh, most of us know what we are supposed to do. We have read our job descriptions. Some of us have not read the job description for a long time because we have just been working. We get instructions, we do our job, and all that. So first thing is to do what you call your skills audit. Put them in a manner that anybody can see the what skill you have. And it goes, you must have demonstrate your knowledge. The knowledge is a wider body of information you have about something. So the knowledge you have about your job, your sector, your industry. Then from there, package yourself in terms of the skills you have. What is it you're capable of doing? What is it that you can do? If you are an engineer, an accountant, a nurse, and all that, don't say nursing duties, looking after patients, giving patient medicine according to prescription. It goes beyond that. You have to say, identifying symptoms of cardiac arrest, something like that. I can be able to do that. Conducting simple uh, procedures and name them what you do, okay? Preparing schedules for nursing. Mm -hmm. Managing a drugs mini store within the world. Emergency nurse capable of uh, managing emergencies in an emergency room. So you put them in a context that anybody reading will see, oh, this is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm looking for. Do not put activities because Everybody knows about the activities. So when you do your skills audit, then you should create your own personal profile. A lot of us put either career profile, personal profile, professional background and all that. In that place is you have to say, when you meet somebody, how do you describe yourself? Most of us are struggling. When I look at a lot of applications, when I read the personal profile, in that profile, you cannot tell this person a HR, an IT, an IT person is talking of about capable projects, I don't know, managing security systems, operating system. Yet I cannot pick out, I said I wanted a network administrator. I would like to see something indicating that this is what you are doing. If you are, if, if you are an operating systems, uh, specialist, I want to see that. So make sure you craft what is what is yourself, a statement that can describe. So when you meet somebody, you introduce, my name is Mathangani Moya, 
I am a career coach. I help people looking to improve their careers. Somebody will tell you, oh, you improve careers. You help people money get to their ambitions. That's what somebody wants to hear. But they said we, the person, the job will be responsible for A, B, C, D. So create a very strong personal profile and make sure that you are able to describe yourself in a manner the other party can see. Now, how do you do this? Please look for jobs, adverts, look at the first few lines, how they describe it, mm -hmm. and try to describe yourself in that context. Oh, great, great. Um, powerful profile. And before I even move to ask uh, Mathangani, what is exactly a powerful profile? Because uh, we hear a lot about profile and you standing out as a brand in this um, space of searching for jobs. Uh, because we understand we are so many, so we need we need to be seen. We need to be understood. Our 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 competency and skills needs to stand out. But before I I go, nice. gone quiet. sorry. Can you hear me, Mathangani? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't know whether okay. we lost you a bit. And, and no, I, if you can I, I hear also, me now, let me know from the chat so I'm not speaking to myself here. Um, we can hear you. you thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, I think Matangani wasn't hearing uh, Holy as well. Loud and clear, thanks, George. And um, yes, Matangani, you confirm that you can hear me. Yeah, I was talking about the strong profile that you, you just ended uh, your, your in insights on. And uh, I, I link that to actually what we keep hearing what we keep getting advice on uh, if you're looking for a job our profile must be strong must stand out uh, whether it's in the social media very well must be stay visible for us to really be uh, faster get to what we, we are getting to but before i go there there's someone who had lifted their hand let me check uh, probably uh i don't know what burning issue that was let me find out but if you have a very uh, hot thing that you need to add on what Matangani is saying before we move to the next thing, kindly you can unmute and ask or share at this point. I can't remember who the person was. I'd seen someone raising their hand. Go ahead, please. Okay, maybe it was by mistake, but in case they they're still interested. We will give them an opportunity at the end when you're picking the questions. So Mathangani, what is a strong profile? And how can our profile really, what can we do to make it stand out and visible, especially to the right people? Very good question. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said earlier, and any HR here will attest, most HR people don't spend a lot of time neither to hiring managers, including the departmental manager, when you send them. They first of all, look immediately what the person says in the first page or in the profile or even in the introductory cover letter. So a strong profile should indicate, one, it must indicate what you have and matches with the employer. Mm -hmm. It must announce you. A strong profile does not, uh, should not be like the ones we see a lot. People put in what we call, um, what you can call behavioral or value statements. I'm passionate, mm -hmm. I'm strong, I'm honest, hardworking, committed, and all that. We can't measure that commitment in that statement. We can only measure it when you join us when you join an institution. So a strong profile must speak in terms of what it is that you have and you can add value. So when an engineer introduces themselves or writes a profile in for a job or a CV they are sending to a consultant, they have to emphasize a little bit of their background in consultancy, in design, in project management. Mm -hmm. Two, if they're focusing on an engineer who is, for example, going for, let's say, civil engineer, but he has been into roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he will say, I'm an engineer with 20 years or 15 years experience in, for example, designing roads within the public sector. Maybe that's what he is. 
mm -hmm. or within urban areas. Okay. I hold a certificate in, he can mention if there's any certification required for that. He has to mention where he has gained that experience. Sometimes engineering is so complex, we know that people work in like what they call rock areas, soft areas. We can say in complex stone areas or with certain profiles, they have a way they describe it. How long has he done that work? He has already said 10 years. Where has he done it? In the private sector or in the public mm -hmm. sector? Okay. Mm -hmm. I have managed multi billion shillings projects from conception. Now he can he can play conception planning, a team of engineers, researchers, and mm -hmm. successfully implemented a major infrastructure. Then he can either mention because some of them you have to mention within, then you can say, is it in Kenya? Is it in Mombasa? You put something that demonstrates because engineers are all over working. Then when we read that profile, we say, oh, yeah, this guy has been in design. This guy has been into construct. This guy has been in project supervision. There is a person. So a good profile must demonstrate all those factors. Do not put yourself HR with 20 years, with 10 years experience. I know a lot of employee relations. What is employee relations? You have to be specific. This is a HR with 10, five years experience with good knowledge of labor laws and implementing yes. labor laws, developing uh, uh, employee benefit programs, managed and successfully developed a strategic plan which dramatically changed, improved turnover, improved staff retention, say something that has to be there. So you also have to quantify and qualify. So profile, we should see you immediately. Mm -hmm. We are not going to see an honest person in Damaris as I'm looking at you now in this, even if you told me you are honest, I'm not saying you're not, but mm -hmm. I cannot. Nobody here will say, oh yeah, we know they are. So yes. avoid using subjective words, use words that show the person you are applying to. Two, do not put the same profile for different jobs. So this, if this engineer is your civil engineer, but it's a housing project, mm -hmm. and he has done housing project, sewerage mm -hmm. project, water project, he will now focus and say, I'm a civil engineer, five mm -hmm. years experience, or not even experience now, who has managed a housing project sewerage system. That's all. Then we so say, here is our guy, here is our person. But if we start talking about the roads, we are not looking about a roads engineer in, the est, in this housing project. Now we are looking at a sewerage and water engineer. Yes. So yes. make sure specific, let it speak to you so that the person who you are introducing you to, whether it is a recruiter, a, a, a manager, or a colleague you have met, can only remember, I met an engineer. Mm -hmm. Good in this, not just an engineer. I met a HR who has started, who has implemented, who is conversant with this, not just a HR. Good. Good. Wow. Wow. So ideally, um, <laughs> even as we audit our skills, we should as well audit and understand the things we are cap we have done and have capability on, and we should demonstrate the same on the CV. Is that what I'm hearing, Mathangani? Yes, that you yes. must demonstrate it. Whether you, whatever you are, you are a nurse. Don't just say you are a nurse with a diploma in higher national diploma. They already know that. That is why they invited you. Or that is why you are qualified. Mm -hmm. Say, what have you done? Manage mm -hmm. an emergency medical ward. Mm -hmm. Manage an accident. But with five nurses, supervise five nurses. Something, something that will talk to them. Good, good, good. I like that. I like those points. I don't know whether you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> like what you're hearing or you're learning something. Let's know uh, through the chat kindly. Just tell us whether you're learning and what it is that you're learning. We are moving swiftly to about uh, an hour on top of an hour there. Kindly, if you have a question you have regarding how to recover your job or help someone recover their job, uh, put it in the chat. We will be coming back in a few minutes just to put through the, the questions to Mr. Mathangani so we can get the answers of the questions we have. So just continue putting your questions on the chat. 
uh, even the insights, whatever you're learning. So we understand we are learning something as well as we move on. So I know Mathangani, we've touched a lot about uh, a great element of what needs to go to a CV because what you're saying about demonstrating your competence, demonstrating what you have been able to do, that is your capability, uh, is a key uh, input that goes into the CV. But I want to ask uh, what exactly is, you know, you're told a lot of things that, that a CV needs to have, but what do we need to have in a CV for it to stand out uh, for us, especially when you're looking for a job? Um, uh, thank you, Demaris. Uh, the first thing is, of course, is the profile. Mm -hmm. The profile must be catchy. It must talk to the recruiter. So avoid using those subjective words. Focus mm -hmm. on what you know, mm -hmm. your abilities, knowledge, skills, mm -hmm. and a statement of what you have done. That is very important. I think I have already explained that. The next thing is how do you put in, when you are putting your CV, um, what, what do you put? There are two levels of a CV. We'll talk of a beginner CV. A beginner CV, you maybe have one to two, a maximum, let's say three years. So you have not done a lot of things. But what do you want to demonstrate? The key thing to demonstrate in such a CV of a one to five years is what we call your duties and responsibilities. Now, most people miss that because in that job description or job advert, they said duties and responsibilities or they said job purpose and they may use other terminologies, but there is always the first paragraph, which is complete. The purpose of the job, the the successful candidate will do the following. That is a job purpose. So the first thing you must do is to reflect that job purpose with your first profile. You can add other things. That is one. Two, when you're describing yourself for the one to five years, instead of saying input, I input, I review vouchers, I record, I receive patients, I issue goods. No, put it like a duty, responsible for, supports the manager in, verifies, <laughs> make statement that look like you actually do something that requires a little bit of, without your respect, some responsibility. Yes. I, and then make sure this is my duty. Avoid statements like that just describe an activity. Inputting, recording leave if you are in HR, that's what we do. <laughs> Updating leave. All these are important and it's what you do to an extent. Mm -hmm. You can put and reach it, use words like managing leave at missing leave to ensure it's accurately captured and recorded. That's a duty you have. It is a duty, it's a responsibility. Yeah. So yeah. put such statements in your CV. Do not use those that we normally put. Please check your CV. I wish I could share you with the CV, but not now. Where people just, you can't tell even what they do. You are looking like, oh my God. You, 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 so look at your work is just to input. It's just like a driver. A driver can't say their work is just to drive. No, they have a duty. Mm -hmm. Deliver in time, pick, collect, manage the car, mm -hmm. check the car, and all that. So if you are applying for a job of a chauffeur and you just say, my work is to drive the bus. Of course, that's why we are hiring you. What else do you do? Make sure he is safe, watch out for safety, you know, uh, well, the other one we call it's, it's a protective uh, driving and all that. So you put all these, making the case in order. It's the same thing that comes to your job. So that is for the typical one to five years where you are still developing things. But also in that sense, you could have some achievements. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to put an achievement because maybe you were given an assignment, successfully implemented or developed 
or was a key team member in mm -hmm. one, two, three, which then say, so always describe what it was, what you did, and the outcome. Mm -hmm. Now we go to the other CV, which you can call mid level and executive. <clears throat> five to say 10, 15 years. Yeah. This CV, again, please don't avoid putting the same thing. A very experienced HR who is committed to, 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 to the world of HR, this is how we put it. An accountant, okay, with over 15, 10 years experience, eight years experience in this, passionate about integrity. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Tell us, in that profile, just tell us. A management accountant with 10 years developing and helping management yeah. in whatever management accountants do. Mm -hmm. Another one does risk in identifying risk areas and suggesting provisions, suggesting recommendations, implementing risk management uh, systems. Then in your CV now, this is the base CV, you should focus more on what you call more of the achievements, the activities you have done, and what you have achieved. So your CV should start from, let's say, employer A. Please make a statement of what you are responsible for. So you just put a statement, duties and responsibility, responsible for the overall management of the general ledger to ensure uh, accuracy, financial, and uh, accuracy of all documents, and that they are within the policy and gu guidelines, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then from there, you should be able to put in what your duties are, combine your duty with a bit of your achievements. Sus successfully overhauled, managed, reviewed, identified, implemented, use words, and what was the outcome? So a typical person, let's say HR, instead of just saying, uh, managing the disciplinary process, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. We know that's an activity. But what have you done? You have been working in HR for seven years, 10 years now. You say, it's reviewed the, the home uh, disciplinary procedure, implemented and reduced cases of unfair termination and legal litigation, saving the company on average 500,000 shillings per year. Because that's what the company wants to know. What have you done? I have managed the entire employee relations, especially disciplinary management, to ensure it is compliance with ABCD. Developed a disciplinary procedure that reduce instances of unfair or unlawful termination and litigation again is the company. That's what we are saying. Developed, yes. uh, recommended a medical benefits uh, package that was cost effective and saved the company 30% of the expenditure over the previous year and created better staff morale. Mm -hmm. Hence, whatever. So you try to put things that have to do with more of achievements and responsibilities and projects that you have overtaken. Because as a manager, you're no longer an importer. You are no longer someone who just manages things. Yes. An accountant, you're not reviewing vouchers. There's something deeper. It's about uh, governance issues. It's about making sure that within the policy, they are, that the, the payment is properly documented, approved, that's what you are doing and reducing financial losses and risks. Good. Good, Masangani. Um, so clearly, uh, the way the way uh, you put your CV really depends on the level uh, you are in in your career. Uh, very clearly articulated there by Masangani. Um, I, I hope uh, if you have any question on how you can uh, align your CV depending on your specific level of your career, feel free and put a question across in the chat and uh, we will get back there in a few minutes. Um, I can see some questions in the chat. Uh, good vibe again going in, in the chat. Uh, Martin, 
Songa is saying, honestly, I myself am learning a lot uh, of things, I think. <laughs> Uh, there is um, Infinix, uh, is that S4? <laughs> he says, thank you, it is great session. Could we have another session on step-by-step -step on how to write a winning CV, uh, Mathangani? Um, Mathangani will tell us uh, how we can uh, do that uh, because I believe it's very possible. Um, and then there is uh, a lot of people accepting and agreeing that they are learning and it's very uh, informative as well. <clears throat> like Mark, Mark M says in, it's an informative talk. Kindly also touch on those eyeing career advancement as a step towards retaining your job seem close to. Um, uh, touch on uh, those eyeing career advancement as the steps uh, towards retaining your job. Matangani, I hope we'll come back to that as well. Uh, yes. It is necessary to include class class eight credentials. <laughs> we will come to that question, but that's a very valid question because uh, we really want to know what needs to go into a CV without uh, putting a lot of unnecessary things because we know the people who get them have no time <laughs> for some things. Thank you very much, Matangani. Probably now we have an idea of the CV, but we haven't gotten there yet, I know, because we also have to search for the jobs and the right jobs and uh, we apply, you know, and how do we secure ourselves that uh, interview and how do we prepare for that interview in, in just a few minutes, Matangani. Right, okay. Uh, yes, now, uh, maybe just to, before we finish the CV, mm -hmm. uh, there are a few other things I would like to just input. Go ahead, when you're go putting ahead. our qualifications, uh, let us be careful. Uh, if you're looking for a certain job and you have several qualifications, and the job only asks for this qualification, it's good you emphasize that qualification that they are looking for. I'm not saying you lie about any other, but Avoid some time. We, 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 we sometimes put um, degree ongoing. If the job did not have quite an inclination that you must have uh, another degree in project management, unless it was a project management degree, then don't put the ongoing. Let them learn that, yes, you're also studying later. Why do we put that? If you're studying, some people some employers get sensitive and they say, well, if he's going to college, uh, he might or she might just become well, a problem. Maybe you may not, but they know you'll be asking time off. So don't say anything that might put off the employer very early. So let's stick to one. And let's go back to your question. You're asking how do we start applying, looking for these jobs? Yes, yes. <clears throat> and how do we prepare for the interview? Give us some oh, good. tips on that. Yes. yes. Very good. Yes. Interview preparation, very key. Uh, first, if you have been invited to an interview, it means you have made a big step. You've been noticed from your CV, from your qualifications. So you have to, first of all, find out some information about the organization. But just get as much information about them. Their background, whatever it is, started, their products, their services, recent developments about them, anything that has happened to them. That is very good. Why is this important? Because somebody might go to an interview and you're asked, tell us what you know about us. And you'd be surprised, some of us say, well, I, I don't know. I know you sell cars. That's all you know. Because maybe you even saw the advertisement somewhere. <laughs> and I say, actually, I had for you the first time. So actually, you look very, very, very bad in front of the interview. It means you don't go uh, beyond what you do to learn the business. So learn about the, the company too. Go back to your, the job description, look at what it asked for, look at what it, 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 the, the, the job description, 
start studying them and say, a question will come from this. And I can assure you, all questions come from this job description or the adverts, and then another 20 up, what you call behavioral questions. So you go through that question, start preparing. They said it must have had experience in, let me go to the accountant, maybe in risk compliance and risk management. Then you see, what do I know about risk management? Have I done this risk management before? It doesn't matter the scope. So just says, look, what do you know about it? Now you can now study about it. They said you must be conversant with the Kenyan tax laws because it's a question of governance. So again, you go and find out, oh, let me read the tax laws. I'm yourself. So for each point they said there, go and put a statement about that and actually study it. Don't memorize it, but say, oh, tax laws. I know Kenyan laws in this industry is 16%, a requirement of a return on this date, and all that. So you get yourself armed with that. The next level you must do is start practicing. Have somebody sit with you and say, this job said this person will be doing this. Let me come and let us test this with you. Why is practice? Because sometimes we go to the interview, we think we are all prepared, but we start fumbling. Mm -hmm. Gain your confidence. Gain how? The other aspect is learn to tell a story. So for every aspect of that, get something you can say about it from your experience. Sometimes we ask a question and you start thinking and they are wondering, I thought you said you have been working in tax compliance. Why are you looking like you're thinking? Because you'll be asked a question you're thinking. So you say, if they ask me about a situation of tax, I have a story. So have a story. And the simple way you tell a story is simply to say, this is was a situation. This is what was happening. This is what I was supposed to do. This is what I did. And this was the outcome. So prepare for those. Two, those are the technical questions. So always have a story about it. If they ask me about this, the other one is behavioral. Most people don't imagine they will be asked some what, uh, questions that tend to put you off because somebody might say, what was the most challenging time in your career? And here you are trying to think through. And sometimes people say, oh, I, I have not had a problem. I've been okay. Of course, that is not proper. It's not right. You just appear like this person seems like uh, they take things very lightly. How can you say you have not had a problem? So again, create a story. Just remember, in an interview, there are always questions you'll be asked. Tell us about yourself, back to the profile. You must have that profile ready. Two, tell us about a situation, a difficult situation. You'll be asked that, which is uh, handling a difficult employee, a decision you had to make. Others will be technical questions. You'll be asked about your weaknesses. Please balance your weaknesses and say, my greatest weakness is, is I think I'm too meticulous and sometimes I get into trouble with people because of that. Something positive, but look, making it look like negative, but they will know it is positive. And mm -hmm. then the other one is, of course, to have your documentations in place. If they ask you for documentations, get your directions right. Some people call the morning before, and you are, we don't, like now with the Mobasa Road and Zika Road and all the roads in the chaos, you are calling and you are in Mulolongo, and you are going for an interview in Westlands. And we say, Muko happy. Now mm -hmm. that, please arrange all this. Get a location. Some employers don't give you the location. Find yeah. out which other is this route. Talk to your Uber. These days, Uber is there. You will say, when I reach here, I'll take an Uber. You'll take me through bypass, Gong Road, and all that. I'll be there. So a bit of preparation, but make sure that you have learned what they expect. Practice a little bit. Get a good friend. And most important, feel free to contact a senior in that field. If you know somebody, I've been caught for an interview as a business development manager for an insurance company. I know you have been there. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of things I should know? Good, good, thanks. Uh, <laughs> for that. Actually, there is a lot that goes into preparing yourself for an interview, uh, including just the technical things that uh, we all are told. And Matangani has emphasized a lot on that. But there's also the aspect of being strategic on how to prepare, including um, uh, being deliberate on seeking actually uh, help on how to prepare and number two um, being able to you know identify key people who can actually give you 
the real information about uh, the, 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 the place or the organization that you are eyeing to. And uh, yeah, I know we cannot quite accomplish all that. Uh, that's why Matangani is here and uh, keep the questions coming. I can see the chat questions are flowing and we will get there. But Matangani, very, very quickly, uh, as we move from preparation of, of an interview, the questions and how we answer the question is another thing, <laughs> that challenging. As you just said, uh, you can prepare, show up uh, in the interview and you fumble in a lot of things, even in that interview. How do we, uh, you know, answer questions. Tough questions can come through, especially even for those, uh, the common one, we find difficulties explaining some career gaps. How do we, how do we uh, answer questions? Give us some tips. Well, okay, very good. It, it, that's very pertinent because mm -hmm. one, when we are asked a question, chances are we, 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 we either start explaining things. Mm -hmm. And I remember one of the things somebody told me uh, during a course at the university, and, it, and I, I believe a lot of MBA people have been told this. When you're told to explain, explain. When you're told to discuss, discuss. <laughs> when you're told to analyze, analyze. And most of us were not sure what, which was which. Mm -hmm. So remember in an interview, the person is purely testing or finding out whether there are two things they are looking for you, confidence throughout. So the first thing is display confidence. Two. Mm -hmm. Be open, be frank, be honest. If you don't know something, you just say, I'm afraid I have not been involved in that, but I can learn. Or practically, I have not done that for the last, but I learned it in my previous job, or I did it in my college or in my school. So you don't just say, I don't know. That is the one thing you can do. Always give a positive thing, even where you don't know. Just know that you have some background about it, theoretical. So please, that is the first thing. Never say, I don't know, <clears throat> or I don't understand. You just say, I'm afraid. I have not been involved. That is the first thing. The other one to answer the question is, always have what I said. Have a story which will be able to explain it. Stories are very powerful. Mm. Two-minute story. And this, for certain scenarios, at certain levels, it's always this. Tell us about your understanding of ABCD, or your background in this, or your experience in this. So you set a story. You ask me about how to handle, let's say in healthcare, is how to handle uh, motor vehicle accidents I receive, you receive in the world. So you start by giving the story, which is basically the procedure of doing that. So you say the first instance, I do want this. The second is that I do this. I then after I check this. After that, I do the following. After that, I call the doctor. Then I put the patient under this. Then you will see you understand it. So this is what we're calling the story. Always prepare a story related to the job. And the simple method which you can all look for and practice is what we call the STAR method. Always give the situation a situation then give a task, what was the task that was to be done, what action did you take, and what was the results. Mm -hmm. So in all aspects of that job, have a story one or two. And since you know them, they are in your mind. So remember, when did I have a difficult decision to make? Oh, I remember when I was at this company. Oh, I remember when I was here then let them be in your mind so that when the time comes, it flows, never hesitate. The difficult questions, again, is the same. You always look for a story. Practice telling a specific story. What do you know about uh, inf uh, road infrastructure, let's say road designs in, uh, they can tell you maybe in hilly areas, engineer you say the first thing we do then describe because you know it then you can say i was actually involved in a very difficult project in which you were laying a bridge across two bridges the soil was soft and you just give you a story you're in management tell us a story oh i was assigned a, a project to develop a product then my 
my team member, two team members reside. I was left only with two. Uh, then just tell, how did you do it? All of us have been involved in something that was difficult. The problem is that we shy away sharing that difficulty. But always finish it. Two, make it real. Please don't create fairy tales. They will recruit us through you. So be honest, answer questions as honestly as you can. Thank you, thank you, very cute. And I really want to emphasize that part of uh, really creating and mastering stories to demonstrate your experience and how you navigated various uh, scenarios in your work because it's powerful. And by the way, most uh, interviews nowadays are becoming behavioral because of various uh, you know, challenges also coming in recruitment and uh, how it translates to performance in the work. So you, we are likely going to meet a lot of uh, interview, interviewers who are asking questions that demonstrate uh, our capability in various uh, skill areas, leadership, communication, in handling a situation, not just answering a question. So stories are powerful. In fact, it's one of the things you need to focus on to, 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 to create and master stories. And I believe Madangani, and I know Madangani is an expert in actually helping people uh, you know, come up with stories uh, and explain the experiences in a powerful stories. So if you have a challenge on how to create your, and master your stories along your career, Madangani is here. Don't uh, feel shy. Connect. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, we'll come to the questions. Keep the questions coming. Put your question on the chat. Uh, very key, uh, Mathangani. I want uh, to ask you, Mathangani. Yes, we we we've gone through the journey and uh, gotten a lot of insights across. But now the job search uh, is is another thing. We want to get uh, to the places, to the job boards, the areas where we can uh, get. Uh, you know, job posts that are aligned to what you're looking for. Are there insights you can give us on this? Uh, yes, job search. Uh, very important in terms of placing yourself either after a job loss or as you're trying to recover your career. And the key thing here is that sometimes we miss the mark because we tend to focus on certain known organizations. Mm -hmm. That is one. So it's very important to take stock of organizations uh, after you have done your own audit, you know your profession. No, where uh, can I utilize these cues? What organizations are available? It may sound, but as we say, looking for a job is actually a job in itself. It is, it is. <laughs> yes, no kutafuta kazi ni kazi. kazi <laughs> so, you have to get a list and say, I am in this profession. Where are these people? Where are these organizations? So most of us tend to focus on the big 20, these big multinationals. But we forget there are other small organizations, equally good pairs. So start searching, go to your Google, Go to your, what is it, this directory, posterior directory. Start looking, engineering companies, if you're an engineer. Finance companies, companies that are in the finance, in the fin business finance world space. Look for them. Mm -hmm. Then start narrowing down. Start doing some research on them. That's why we have to enter the net. To Google them and say, where are they? What do they do? What is their size? Basically, I avoid large companies because I've never seen APSA or Backlist advertising for branch managers. Mm -hmm. They get them from their own. I've not seen the, the big oil companies. I've not be, seen the big insurance companies except advertising for sales executives and one or two senior positions. So look for where the, what we call the hidden jobs because they are somewhere. And the secret is, you just note that about 70% of all jobs are never advertised. True. We find True. a few in the papers. They, of course, the public sector is very good at advertising. Mm -hmm. The NGO world is a bit good in that, but other than the highest employers. So start looking for that too. Go to LinkedIn. Put that profile we said, anybody looking for 
a particular job, we'll be able to see that from your profile. And reminder, the LinkedIn and all job platforms use uh, softwares to pick out people who meet certain job criteria. That is why I said, when you say input this, input data, what data? Please put very clearly, if it is IEPC, yeah, you are an electoral clerk. Put a language, check what is the language that is used in electoral bodies. Then you use that. It's in reviewing electoral registrars. So maybe the job is looking for somebody with experience in electoral, maintaining, managing, reviewing electoral voter registrars. Mm -hmm. Then your name will appear because that's what they look for. The key, the keywords, the keywords. So make sure that your LinkedIn profile, the CV that you upload into job platforms measures to that. So go out to the net, the jobs are there. Two, networking. You know so many people. Don't go asking them to give you a job, the Kenyan style. Look for a job for Damaris. You know now she has two kids. One has gone to the university. You know, and all this. This is how we say. No. Learn how to network and introduce yourself using that profile. Hello, Mr. So and so. There's a person you go to church with. There's a person you meet in that wedding in the supermarket. Uh, you, you create a chat and just introduce some so and so. I am a management accountant. Uh, in the event you hear of anybody looking for a management accountant, I'll be happy to discuss with them. That person will be remembering management accountant, not that I introduced myself as Madangani Moya. And we just met in the supermarket in the queue and there was a delay and we picked a conversation. The, then maybe I might exchange, cards are not very good, but since you don't know them, this is where the cards come, he may dump it on his table, but you'll be remembering, I know I threw it somewhere, I knew it threw it somewhere. So learn to introduce yourself by your profession and what you can do. I'm a management accountant, I help companies or small medium-sized businesses manage their finances. So again, create a network, make a list, who is who, where did you meet them? Maybe make a court call. Hi, you remember me? Have we met at so and so's baby shower, wedding, funeral, whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Say, I just wanted to let you know. I noticed you knew so and so who happens to be my friend, my cousin. Don't shy. And I wanted to let you know I am an IT security specialist. If you hear anybody wanting an IT specialist, the services of an IT security specialist. I am available, please refer me. This is how you, you can do it. Two, don't be sending uh, applications left and center. Sometimes we just find applications in our emails. If you're sending to an organization which is okay, please make sure you introduce yourself in the body of the email and make it simple. I'm so and so, a registered nurse with a higher diploma in critical nursing looking for opportunity i've submitted for my application in the event you may require somebody with my skills that's it we will remember somebody sent an application saying that but when you go telling them oh you know i'm very good if you get me don't oversell yourself and that's what we do so these are some things you can use the jobs are out there create your network and you'll get it that's true that's very true very Good points there, Makanani. And I like what you're saying about uh, leveraging on other platforms like LinkedIn. And I'm telling you, if you are in that space, whether you are looking for a job uh, or not, uh, LinkedIn, they say, is a network for all professionals. Stay visible, stay um, active in LinkedIn. Uh, if you're looking for a job, it's very important actually to, to be visible there because even in these times and age, the recruiters or the people who are, you know, shortlisting you, the first uh, thing they'll do is to look and uh, search you online. They want to know a bit about you online. And you can imagine if you're not visible anywhere, the possibility of you being dropped, uh, you know, it's a bit higher. And again, what is it that they find online? You know, how is your profile? Like Mr. Matangani is saying, what, what posts are there on your social media like Facebook? That's why you, 
you need to be very cautious on the kind of uh, content also you post because that goes into the, to your profile and you defines lost your... uh, you, you've lost me Matangane. if you can hear me kindly let me know Matangani has lost me again right there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're back you're back I'm we back. can hear you. Maybe it's thank you. you, thank you, Horace. Thank you for, for that confirmation. <laughs> I'm just emphasizing the importance of you being on uh, social platforms and putting your profile the way it needs to be powerful uh, in social platforms and contributing uh, content that demonstrates your competencies and capabilities online. And you won't believe what will happen because that's how you stay visible. So even tell us what uh, things uh, you can help people with. Uh, and the people will you create a following, like you're being told, network is very key. And 70% uh, actually, like Matangana say, jobs are not advertised. But how do they get to place people there? It's referrals, it's connections. So uh, we, get, uh, we need to get a bit uh, step ahead on who knows what we are capable of doing because those are the people who refer us to those jobs and the only way to broaden this space uh, matangani if i am right uh, you know or wrong correct me there is to make sure your network is so wide and uh, the quality of network you have again is very key so going to linkedin revamp your your profile there um, matangani has mentioned something very important if you searching a job in certain titles make sure those are the titles under your name in the profile because when they go searching for an, an administrator it has to be there on that uh, on that uh, you know uh, profile of yours first thing there so it will be able to pick you so if you don't know to revamp your 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 profile online get in touch we will help you with that and if you have any question put it again on the chat because you're moving to the question in the next about seven minutes uh, as we wind up so be visible tell people what you learn or you, you you teach people about something and you can start with this actually uh uh, webinar we have here you are allowed to take a caption of what is there go to linkedin tell people you attended this what you learn and whatever but like that and that's how you tag matangani <laughs> tag everybody you know here including myself and that creates a visibility for you on, on linkedin as well as on other social platforms and then people know you also have an option of saying you are open for a job even in linkedin that makes sure you many people see you as possible so matangane i want to ask you a very interesting question here uh, that um someone had posted uh, through the first person was asking about uh, is it is it important uh, to put uh, our profile up to class eight level when we are doing the cv maybe you could start up with that one Oh, well, what I can say, if your highest level of education is class eight, of course, it's very important. If you, mm -hmm. But if you have a degree, it may not be necessary unless it was indicated in the CV. Mm -hmm. You may crowd, you may crowd your CV, but it's, it's really a choice. Nobody wants to know you after 40 years, 30 years or 35, whether you went. But if it's not class eight, but you can just say went to Kilimani Primary School, Kilimani Secondary School, Mm -hmm. University of Kabianga. Good, good. So it really depends on the level you are in. Um, yes. Uh, or the level of education you went up to. But I believe if you are applying for a very uh, C suite uh, <laughs> position. Yes, yeah, yes, you don't need it. <laughs> you don't need you don't to need say, uh, you already have a PhD, so we will know you actually are in a primary school yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mark, I think oh, Mark M is asking, um, first is appreciating, is very informative. I think I'd say this earlier. Kindly also touch on those eyeing career advancement as steps towards retaining your job seem close to. They didn't quite. Uh, Mark, I don't know whether Mark is still here, probably will clarify that. Mark? I don't quite get what Mark was asking. Uh, when okay. he mentions eyeing career advancement, is it is it promotion or is career growth within the workplace? Um, Mark, if you can kindly, you can unmute yourself and clarify. Maybe as he's coming in, I can just touch briefly on. But when you come back, please let us know. Yes. Uh, on just career advancement, mm -hmm. of, uh, the first thing you have to do as a, to advance your career is uh, 
your presence in I would call executive presence is very important. Make sure you get the right skills for the job. That mm -hmm. is one. Two, make sure that your delivery in terms of how you communicate. We take communication. Here I'm talking about giving feedback, about passing the message of what the expectation is. Mm -hmm. We are talking about giving uh, feedback to those you are supervising or articulating your ideas, being confident, uh, your emotional intelligence, how you are able to manage the staff and your relationships. We are talking about at the end of the day is your leadership capabilities. Mm. So stand out as a person who seems, whether you have to make the hard decisions, whether you have to pass hard information, good information, you are able to make all that balance. And within a time, she, people should recognize you as somebody who has got special capabilities or standing out and you start being noticed. So go ahead and please improve on your personal development. Mm. And from there, at a time you come, even if you don't get it within, somebody else will recognize you outside or you feel you have reached your peak and then start looking for opportunities. Mm. And invest in yourself directly, don't wait always for your employer. And at the most, you can always make sure you have somebody standing by you, either a coach or a mentor. Okay, that's, that's so valid. And, and just to add on, uh, personal development is very key because uh, it demonstrates the, 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 the types of skills you have. And the most interesting thing is actually there is a lot of uh, learning courses, uh, online learning courses actually that can be attached even once you complete they include your certification on a profile on, on online pro profile there and just go to linkedin other pl platforms they have free uh, online courses i know the waiting for for the interview or for that job to show up can be a bit longer but you can utilize that time to develop yourself as well so mathangani there is martin uh, asking is it acceptable to apply for a job? Maybe as per JD, you qualify, but maybe in terms of academic qualifications, you lack one requirements. For example, bachelor's, but you have diploma. Uh, we see this when you're searching for a job. If you meet at least 70% of the job requirements, mm -hmm. go ahead and apply. There's no harm. But if you're meeting just about 50, then chances you'll be getting a lot of regrets. If every job you have advertising says you must have a degree, you must have 10 years experience and you have four years experience, chances you're frustrating yourself. So as much as possible, do that what we call a job analysis and look at what are they asking for, what do you have. If you meet 70%, go ahead there is no harm something might just come in that person mm. with a degree might just fail to get the job That's and true. might also be the best interviewee so go right ahead and apply that barnabas omondi i know i saw your hand up kindly proceed uh, you can unmute yourself barnabas thank you damaris thank okay. you so much for giving me the chance and uh, also thank you Gangani for such an insightful, that is a plethora of information. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, uh, there's uh, this adage, and in fact, you've also used it, that uh, when you start your introduction, that get someone to work with you through your career. This is something that has been used many times. In fact, I'm even getting used to it, but I have a challenge with it because uh, this is we are talking about a mentor, and we all know that a mentor show you the way. A mentor is someone who will give you the value and experience. But now, how do I come up with a mentor? <clears throat> because that is something that uh, I've always have a challenge with it. Because I really want to have someone who can show me the way I can trust as an advisor. But how do I get to have this person? This is a challenge to me. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, uh, Barnabas. <laughs> a very important question. How do we identify a mentor? <laughs> very good question. Very good question. Uh, now we have, we have mentors and we have coaches playing very key roles. 
a mentor need not necessarily sometimes be somebody who is in your profession. They just need somebody who will be frank with you and you can be bouncing back your challenges and they'll be able to give you some guidance. They will be able to hold you in your low moments, in your high moments. So how do you find one? Look around. Look at somebody you feel is like a, a friend to you. It may not be necessarily in your workplace, but in some workplaces you can get, but don't forget some of the people you may be looking for are the ones who will be fighting you. I mean, the reality, unfortunately, we have to share this, okay? But in that same organization, there are people who are, have got a heart which is different from so many. The person who can be going, I have a problem with my supervisor. I have got a problem with my people I'm supervising. So look for somebody who, who can create a trust. It could even be a very good old friend from the past, your high school friend, your primary school friend, your whatever it is. But when you get to him, you actually have to tell him, I would like you to be my mentor. I want you to be able, I want to be coming to you for some advice. Do you mind? They will be happy. Most people are happy. The only thing is, don't be overbearing on the mentor. You tell them, could I give, be giving you a call maybe once a week or maybe after every two weeks? Can I be calling you when I have an issue? Now, if, if he's a senior person or busy person, you don't keep on calling him, he's going to see his contract, he's, he's on peace office, then you have to agree what time is suitable for you, then you agree all that. That is one way you can look for this mentor. They are all over. That one person you can confide in. Look for them. As somebody said somewhere, make a friend either in the workplace, but don't go to look for friends. So out there, you also have people who if you approach them, and I would like to challenge all of you. Uh, those who go to church tomorrow, there's somebody you have been admiring, you think they can help you, walk to them, say hello, introduce yourself, and say you'd like to have a word with them when they have time. They may tell you one minute, give me two minutes, or they tell you maybe next week I'll call you, I'll give you, tell them I was looking for you because I admire you, I'd like you to be a mentor, they will be there. Mm -hmm. For the coaches, they are there. We are here, the others. Like this person who wants how to progress in their career. There are programs which you actually take them through. And you say, I really want to get a grip on my job, on my leadership and all that. And again, you get somebody who can able to do that. So just go ahead, look at somebody you like, you admire, who is your close friend, including that uncle of yours, including that auntie of yours, including that elder brother of yours. Yeah, that's very, that. that's very true. That's very true. Thanks. Yes. I hope uh, Barnabas, you've got some clarity on that. <laughs> if it's still uh, need thank some you, thank more. You. Thank you very much, Damaris. But okay. uh, just allow me to have been just one more time. And uh, uh, Madangani, I'm so uh, proud that you shared that, but I also had an input on a profile. Yes. Uh, I also thought that it would be so better or wise for, for one to include their professional body that he or she is uh, in so that when the employer may have a look at that, they may realize that you are certified to practice the profession that you are uh, uh, pursuing. So I think that is also important that you uh, include your profession board. Unless mm -hmm. you have a view on that, then you can also input. Anyway, I'm really uh, grateful. Yes, yes, welcome, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for that uh, input, and it's a valid input. In fact, uh, allow me to refer again to LinkedIn. When you're making the LinkedIn profile, it actually gives you the guidelines on what to input there. If you complete your uh, LinkedIn profile, you must have seen that uh, area where you are requested to, whether you are a member of, of a, a professional, uh, you know, institution. So once you get down there, uh, that's how we talk about the complete profile on LinkedIn. And I believe it's the same on other platforms uh, on that. And thanks for your input, uh, Barnabas. That's very insightful as well. Horace uh, is asking, is it possible? And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I know we over. <laughs> of writing on the time now, uh, if you could kindly just allow us about five more minutes, 
uh, so we could just uh, cover a bit of the questions here in Makangani. But meanwhile, uh, because I don't know whether we'll be able to finish, we could get your contacts. Uh, then we can share uh, all the questions with the answers after this, uh, or a few days after this, when uh, it's been put, uh, you know, in a more orderly way, as well as the recording uh, for this uh, webinar. So to Horace is saying, is it possible that the employer, especially uh, those charged with process of recruitment, may be scared by the strength of your CV and possibility of you holding their position or being their senior in their future? Yes. Matangani. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me say this first. Can uh, that CV be a bit intimidating for me? <laughs> First, never ever go to a job or apply for a job with a perception that they will fear me. Where do you get that perception from? Because it means anything they do, you'll be seeing it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So avoid that what I call negative vibe. Yes, of course, if they are scared, they will not get you. So are you concerned? That's my answer. If they are scared about your qualification, they will not invite you. So why would you be bothered about it? So you apply. If you find that, exit yourself. In fact, that is a great advice I was given by one of my bosses. He told me, if you are happy and happy about an employer, please exit yourself before you're exited. So don't pre sum. Of course, employers come in all shapes and colors. It is your choice. You're looking for a job. You choose whom to work for. They choose whom they want to work with or employ. So it's a two way, whatever. So let's not get that. So if you have an MBA, a PhD, why are you applying for a job in a supermarket as an accountant? They will not get you. Yeah, with one of our medium sized supermarkets or an MSc. So again, don't say he's scared for me because I have got an MBA. No, <laughs> apply, he'll tell you. And the other people are telling you, keep your MBA aside, my friend, but I've given you a job because you are CPA, okay? Keep your MBA aside, I've employed you as a branch manager. So please don't go with your mba -ness. I'll probably be telling people, if the job did not ask for a degree or a postgraduate, go, but don't go carrying it and say, why are you giving a job of a clerk and I have a degree? Is mm. you who applied the job. That's so real. positiveness, yeah, my that's friend. That's Don't judge real. employer. It's a difficult world. It is a capitalist world. Make the best out of it and you'll find your bearing somewhere. Okay. Um, Matangani, I hear you. <laughs> the attitude you show up with matters very much as well. <laughs> Don't go with your... In fact, uh, Fiona is also adding a lot on uh, the, the, the interview itself, uh, on the questions that come up. And, uh, you know, at the end there, they always ask whether you have a question uh, to ask them, you know. And Fiona is saying you, you, you need to have uh, at least two questions prepared. So don't just go there and assume. You prepare the questions before you show up. Thanks that. Uh, yeah, that is it. I, yeah, please make sure you have at least one or two questions. Don't yes, say, yes. And I like I have. said, we might not be very comprehensive and going deep in these things because of time, but get in touch. There is a comprehensive way of preparing for an interview, uh, writing a CV, even uh, doing job search. There are all uh, comprehensive strategies for doing that. So get in touch in case you need any help. So, um, hello, sometimes being eloquent and scoring high in interview is inversely proportional. <laughs> oh, let me get this one right. It's inversely proportional uh, to performance after hire. Kindly, how do you discover such applicants who are on point on interview session but extremely perform poorly on the workplace? A very tricky situation there for any interviewer. <laughs> Matangani. Uh, uh, well, there is a, a mantra that is used by one of my colleagues, and I'll repeat it here, which is also used by a lot of recruiters. Uh, one, just know that the best, the CV gets you the interview, how you conduct yourself in interview gets you the job, your competencies and performance maintain you in the job. 
So as a recruiter, as an interviewer, you have to get the tricks of how to discover this best interviewee in the table, and that is a skill you have to gain. But you have to tell your story and be very good at your interview conversations. Do not shy. There is always a, a two side to any story. So be confident. So if you are a recruiter, you have to know how to go through those people. And we know how to. Sometimes we can tell this is a Google, this is a Google interviewer, or this is uh, somebody who has been coached by a backyard uh, uh, interview coach, because you just be muttering, yeah. That's true. That just just to say that uh, um, people who do talent uh, attraction are well. You if you meet the ones who are prepared, they will know this even from the interview desk. Uh, and I agree that with what Matangani is saying. So uh, the questions are so many, Matangani. I think these ones we love to answer separately, and then we share yeah. the answers after that yes. because we are we are overtaking, overriding the time with some more minutes. Um, yes. And uh, is it right to ask the duration in which you should wait for response after interview? Is it right to ask? I think, uh, Horace, we didn't quite get that question very clearly. Uh, if you can re-ask uh, so we can get that. How do you handle the salary negotiation discussion? I think Matangani, that one, will, uh, will revert with a more comprehensive answer uh, because of time, because it's a very key question. Uh, and it's a very important part of this process of, uh, you know, yeah, getting your job or career back. And um, we have actually overridden time. I want just to post the question side there and come to Matangani. There are so many questions coming through regarding how to, to, to search for the job, how to prepare, how to prepare even for the CV, uh, how to answer the questions of the interview. And I know this is your one core element and domain in, your, in what you do. If you could just take uh, one or two minutes and explain how you can support uh, these, uh, uh, you know, participants uh, in a more better personalized way. I kindly take, take away my thing. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will try as best we can to answer some of these questions. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll take them from the chats. Um, at, uh, as I said, at Pristine, we offer various services. I focus now on the issue of career which is diverse. And one of the main things that we do is that we prepare new managers. So we have a new manager program. You have just taken a recent job as a manager or supervisor, and you're trying to get in and to actually survive at least your first 90 days. And thereafter, we do have our new managers, which we take you through the various program methods and support you during that period so that you're able to gel in and survive. We also have this other one, which we call the interview, a CV preparation and interview skills masterclass, which is mainly the focus of this. It's a four weeks program, which we meet uh, on a weekly basis. We take you through the, in detail, the things that you have said, and the outcome is that we shall be able to do a skill audit for yourself, you prepare that one, we'll be able to teach you how to do a job analysis and to make sure that it is matching or talking the interviewer's requirements. We will also prepare a CV that is authentic based on the job analysis and your skills matrix. We'll also prepare you for how to answer questions at whatever level, uh, whether you are a beginner, whether you are the executive or CSOT, we prepare how to answer those questions and including the hard, tricky questions. Then we do a cover letter for you and we even do a mock interview for you. That course takes four weeks, is quite comprehensive. There'll be activities, you work with it and you begin your own skills so that you are able to do it in future. You're able to actually now become almost an expert in CV and interviews. We'll teach you how to customize CVs to specific uh, jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, we charge post-corona, this program was charging at 10,000 shillings for what we call middle-level CVs mm -hmm. and 5,000 shillings for what we call the 
the novice CV that is one to five years experience. But I've consolidated all that from to 7,500. But for those who have attended this program, I'm giving it to you at 6,000 shillings, the entire program. If you're interested, please get in touch with the details that were on the poster. If you commit yourself that you'll be able to take this before the 5th of June, then you can take that offer. Otherwise, we'll go back to the one that I'll be charging the separate people who come. Just mention I attended this interview, I sorry, I attended this webinar, and I'll be interested. And then I'll take you through this, and I can assure you, you it will make such a big difference in your job search, in your creating better opportunities for making that career transition. And for those who will be interested in other courses, you just let me know why, what stage are you, are you looking for? Uh, like the person who talked about how do you develop your career and get this promotion? Yes, we'll take you through all that. We also have a course which is for HR professionals. So if you're HR, we have a HR professional coaching. My approach is a coaching approach and I get the best out of you. So again, if you'll be able to, if you're interested in that, feel free to let me know. The next courses will be starting from the second week of June, and then we proceed from there. So welcome. I look forward to hearing from you, wow. and I wish you the best. Thank you. There is an offer there. Did I hear that right, Mathagani, for today? <laughs> Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, you, if you really want to know how to create a winning CV, you want to know how to, to identify the people you need to follow closely and connect with them so you can learn on how to win in your next interview, how to secure your next interview and how to prepare for it. You only need to write in this chat interested with your email or number. And I'm sure Matangani will get in touch with you with the offer. <laughs> because if you are interested and your message is here, there's no way we will not know that you were in, not in this session. So just key in there, interested, leave your uh, email or your number there so that Matangani, you can secure, you can secure the offer here. I'm hearing it's a lucrative offer, uh, almost 50%, somewhere close there. And I'm telling you from where I sit, it's value it's value you'll get value for that not just for even the job you'll get or even the advancement in your career you will make but you'll find value as you move on in your career path thanks very much i can see interested uh, is flowing thanks consolata thanks fiona or or is there interested interested keep them coming we will Mathangani, of course will keep the data here and get in touch and you will be getting the help you need uh there is someone i must read Mathangani kindly <laughs> Because I know Mr. Let me see, is even written here referring me to my name. <laughs> so if I don't ask for me, I know it's going to it's going to find me. <laughs> you don't ask his question. From Duiga. Duiga, I, I know you you've written there P30 Pro. Good. Nice to join the platform, courtesy of Damaris. You must have referred me for a reason. <laughs> My question is whether professionally there is something like of a qualification and how do employers handle such when such an application is done? Thanks. It sounds like closer to the person who was being overqualified and intimidating those uh, senior people. Is there anything like overqualification? Just, just yeah, so you can answer. We are in a short of time. We have to close. We have yes, to keep yes. going. Yes, yes, there is overqualification. Overqualification. What does it mean? If the job does not did not say you need this type of qualifications, it may reduce your chances. It is a fact. If a job just said we want a first degree and then you list three degrees which is what is happening with most of us. Please list just the relevant degree for the time being. I have a degree in project management. Yes, if you are looking for an entry position, it did not ask for a postgraduate degree and you apply for it, chances are they will skip you. Mm -hmm. And the reasons are simple. Employers, of course, want to start somewhere with any, everybody. If I want a manager, then I'll ask you to have CPAK. Now, CPAK has become almost a, a standard with entry point. 
But then after that, you come in with another postgraduate degree, in master in finance, master of science in finance. This person, which is whether it's a professional body, KPMG, Deloitte, who, Barclays, Shell, whoever, they just ask, we want somebody with a degree in mechanical engineering. But here you have come with a PhD in mechanical engineering, in an MSc, in a project management, four degrees. Chances are, they will say, first, you don't even have the, where we are looking for. You should wait for a while, then we give you a management. Yes, to answer your question, there is overqualification yes. for a job. Be careful when you're applying for it, but there is a way, and we'll go through another program we show is your qualifications keeping you from your job. True, true, true. Thank you for that, uh, Mathangani. There you have it, uh, Mr. Twigger. I have uh, done my, my duty there of answering that <laughs> a few questions here, although we, 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 we have touched a bit on, on some of the things you're asking. Uh, good vibe, good presentation, uh, learned mistakes done on job profile, among other interest, uh, in, uh, other, uh, other things. She is interested, that's from Grace, uh, Thanks, Grace, for joining. Thanks for showing interest in, uh, in, in the program, of course, for developing and understanding how to navigate this uh, challenge of uh, securing your career back. This was a great presentation. God bless you. I like that awesome Vincent. And there's a lot of, I'm interested, uh, um, you know, uh, people eliciting that they are interested in leaving their contact. I feel like tying it down there, Mr. Matangani. I want you to say your bye, <laughs> your, your closing comment, and then I can close it down for you. Well, I can say thank you very much. There is a lot, a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. out here, but how to get them is the challenge. Jobs are available. Do not be discouraged with one failure. Do not be afraid to ask for help. Do not be overconfident with your qualifications and your work experience. Do not fail to take a job that is slower than what you're having after you lose your job. Take the job, then start your career plan. If you feel that you are drifting away from your career for any reason, please take stock of that and make sure that you start preparing yourself Arm yourself with the skills that are coming now because we are really moving towards a new uh, era. So make sure you arm yourself. I'm available. Feel free to come. You can give me a shout. You have my number on the card up there. Somebody has asked for the number. And we look forward to greater interaction in the future. We are going to be running at least one free webinar per month and maybe a second one. So be watching out for this space. And you can also visit my personal page of YouTube. We are going to upload, upload this and also be giving you the link. Please share your email. And those who are interested, please give your emails. Thank you. That's my number there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in case you're asking, could I could see Grace, someone asking for the number? It's right there on the chat. You can pick it from there. We are all on any social media platform. Uh, like I said earlier there, you've learned something, uh, you could leave it in the chat. Go again in your social media platform, start being visible. You can put the lessons you've learned from this webinar there. Feel free to caption before I end this webinar <laughs> and take that uh, video, I mean, uh, picture there and uh, start linking people. Tag uh, uh, Mathangani, tag myself, tag anybody you saw here and let's uh, start uh, building the network for yourself again. Uh, in this space, it works like Mahangani has already explained. For anybody giving us a great vibe through the chat, we appreciate a lot. It's been an honor for me to navigate you through this webinar up to this moment. I am Jamaris Ndungwa signing out. I am uh, very happy that we were able to learn such uh, great lessons from here. I'm in learning and development space in Blue Concepts Africa. And there, I support the people who want to develop. Uh, sharpen uh, overcome challenges in their teams now in the workplace <laughs> looking to get in the workplace uh, building high performance team is my forte as well as helping leaders build uh, cultures that enable productivity and de develop as well effective leadership to navigate all the workplace towards the productivity they are looking for from me it's a goodbye have a great weekend 
and see you next time in the next webinar or on any social media platform if you tag me. Thank you very much, um, uh, everybody, and God bless you. Now you can unmute at this point is where I allow people to unmute and say goodbye. Irene, goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you.